In this video we're going to take a look at how to model the square column in activity 125 sketches, extrusions, revolutions, oh my. And uh, with this we're going to start off like we do all our all of our CAD models. We're going to make, create a new component and we'll give it the name of square column. From here we're going to go ahead and make sure I'm going to change the document settings. We're going to make sure we're in inches. If you start in a new, new design file like make me I have mine set defaulted to inches, but just verify. So because in the last model in the activity, we modeled it in millimeters. So mine's in inches, so I'm going to be good to go there. So I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to kind of build this as I kind of see it on the bottom. So I'm going to choose this, this work plane that's kind of uh, facing in the same direction as the top of our view cube. And I'm going to go ahead and create a circle. This is going to set the center point at the origin, and, and as I draw, I can actually type in the di diameter. So this is a 1.25 inch diameter circle. It'll be fully constrained. I'm going to go ahead and say finish the sketch, and I'm going to click on the home button to put it into the, into the isometric view. I'm going to go ahead and click extrude, and the height of this is going to be 0.5. So that'll give us the base at which we'll start. Looking at our drawing, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Create Sketch. And I'm going to choose the top of the cylinder to build the square portion in the middle. And I'm going to go to Create, choosing Rectangle and Center Rectangle. And I'm going to click on the origin to set the center of the rectangle. And this is going to be a 0.5. And then as if I go to the next text box, I'm going to press the Tab key by 0.5 square. I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to extrude, selecting the rectangle, and looking at the dimensions off of the drawing that is provided. The overall height of this is 2.5, but we have to subtract the 0.5 uh, circular bottom and the 0.25 there. So this would put us at 1.75 for the height of our, of our square, kind of middle portion. And then if I create another sketch, I'll click on the top of it, and then I'll go ahead and I'm going to draw another circle. Again, origin is going to be our center point. And then if I draw out, and actually, as long as as, as long as you have this auto project edges on sketch creation, sketch creation, you should be able to click and snap to the previous circle. Now this still may not go through and give you a black circle, so let's go ahead and just choose di choose the sketch dimension option, and then go ahead and make sure that's 1.25 which looks like that's what does it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish the sketch. When I go to extrude, I have to choose the circle and I have to choose the square shape to make sure that it's completely filled in and it's going to have a quarter inch extrusion there on the top and then we can go ahead and say OK. The last portion we have to take a look at are there are three holes in the front and in order to create those, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new sketch. And I'm going to choose the front face of where those holes are going to start on our model. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw three circles right now. And we're going to use something. We haven't really covered these yet. But I'm going to go ahead and show you something here with what they call geometric constraints. So up here in your constraints panel, or if you don't see all of these, you can always click on the word constraints and it'll show you all of them. I'm going to find the equal constraint. So when I select it, it you'll notice it'll stay highlighted up here in the menu. I'm going to select the circle, the first circle, and I'm going to choose the second one. And it'll make them the same size and it throws a little symbol next to them, which is the same symbol as what you see, the equal symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. I'll click the second circle and I'll click the third one and then it's going to make them all of equal size. So now when I click or when I choose sketch dimension or if I press like I've been doing pressing the D key on my keyboard I can dimension one of the circles which is going to be at a diameter of 0.25 and that'll kind of go through and kind of move them but and also but makes them all the same size. So I can always click and drag these by their center points and move them a little bit more. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint. So in order to make sure these guys are all lined up together, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on the center point of the first circle and then click on the center point of the second circle. And you'll see this vertical constraint gets applied. And then I'm going to click the second center point 
of the second circle and then choose the center point of the third circle. And what that's going to do is now if I try to click and move these, they're all going to stay vertically constrained together. So now I can start to add in some of the dimensions that I see from the drawing. We we'll go ahead and I'm going to choose sketch dimension from the right edge as they show on the drawing to the center point of the top circle. This is going to be a distance of, of 0.25. So it's going to put us right in the middle of our portion there, of our square area there. Then if I click on the top edge of the circular bottom to the center point of the third circle, I can go ahead and make that 0.5. I'm going to go from the third and second circle here. Same thing for the sizing, 0.5. And then the same thing for the center points of circles 1 and 2. And make it 0.5. And that's going to go through and give us the appearance that we want to see. And I can go ahead and say finish the sketch. And then in the activity, I can choose extrude. They actually tell us that the holes go all the way through, so I'm going to select the three circles. I can grab the blue arrow to drag back into the part. And if I, and if I know, I know that this is going to be, I could put negative 0.5, but I always like to under the extent type, I can hit the drop down and choose all. And then that's going to cut all the way through, and you'll see it'll have 0.5 put in there. But it'll go through and it'll cut all the way through for this model. And this will finish out the square column for activity one, two,